I hear there's a number of different medicational options for Parkinson's disease. Can you talk us through what the basic options are? So the, the mainstay of treatment for Parkinson's is levodopa replacement. This is a, a therapy that was developed in the 1960s, still the most um, physiological way of restoring what's lost in Parkinson's, which is loss of the normal dopamine signaling. So levodopa is, is given by tablet. It's absorbed in the small bowel, circulates in the bloodstream, and then it gets taken up into the brain, into the surviving dopamine cells, and it's converted from levodopa into dopamine in those cells. And then it's released as and when you need it for normal movement. So it's a nice way of copying the normal physiology that we would have if we had a normal dopamine pathway without Parkinson's disease. There are other drugs which have been developed um, over the past couple of decades. One group is the dopamine agonists, and they directly stimulate the dopamine receptors without needing to be converted it into anything. But they're slightly less physiological because they're stimulating the receptors the whole time. They're not being released as and when you need it. Then there's a group of drugs called the monoamine oxidase B inhibitors, which you know, by inhibiting this enzyme, monoamine oxidase, it blocks the breakdown of dopamine. So if you have some circulating dopamine in your brain, then it hangs around for longer. These tend to be less effective than either levodopa or the dopamine agonists, but they're very well tolerated. They're convenient and they have few side effects. It's a gentle drug. It's easy, but it has very, very, very low um, benefits. So can you talk a little bit about the, the sort of strategy of how you combine these different medications and maybe the difference between a young onset person and somebody who's a bit older, if there's a different mix of medications? So it's important to have a discussion with your patient about the different preparations, what the, you, they can expect to get from prescription of, of one of these different medications and what the potential side effects might be. What many people fear is, is developing involuntary movement and these involuntary movements you know, can in, in some extreme cases be, be quite striking and, and quite disabling in of themselves. So when if people see levodopa induced dyskinesias in someone else with Parkinson's who's had it for a longer period of time, there can be a fear about taking levodopa because I don't want to develop the, these involuntary movements. And the reality is that the real risk of dyskinesia is related to how long you've had Parkinson's for not necessarily how long you've had a levodopa prescription for. Exception to this is if we use high doses of levodopa early on in the disease, it might bring the date that people get dyskinesias a little bit earlier. So what we tend to do to keep doses of levodopa low is we add in dopamine agonists and add in monoamine oxidase B inhibitors. And so the dose of levodopa necessary is kept lower. So having combinations of pills gives you the benefits of each and keeps the side effects um, down. I didn't mention that the side effects that you can get with the dopamine agonists. So it's not uncommon for people to feel a little bit sleepy. They can have effects on blood pressure that make people a little bit dizzy. Sometimes people get a bit of ankle swelling as well. The major thing that can happen with a dopamine agonist that we need to um, be aware of is that they can cause impulsive or compulsive behaviours. These are important because they, they can lead to a breakdown of, of relationships. So men will typically gamble if, if they have a propensity to do that, or they can get excessively interested in, in sex. Women tend to do more shopping and more stereotypic female things to do. And you have to be slightly cautious in coming out with stereotypes, but it, it's, it's not it's surprising how commonly people do fit these stereotypes. And men do have more gambling and more um, sex addiction, and women have more um, uh, compulsive shopping and spending. And if, if you make people aware of these issues when you add in a dopamine agonist, then it means if, if these things emerge, then a, a husband and wife can have the, can recognize things, these things, have the discussion and deal with them much more effectively than if they're not discussed and they're hidden away or, or secreted and, and, and lead to bigger problems and, and you know, major strains on, on a relationship. There are a range of medications available to treat the symptoms of Parkinson's, for example, levodopa and dopamine agonists. Everyone responds differently to medication it may take some time to nail down the combination which works best for you. Watch out for side effects, in particular signs of impulse control disorders such as excessive interest in sex, shopping and gambling.